the iPad Pro. Yes, I'm talking about the new one. If you actually own it and you have the Apple Pencil, here's some cool hidden features and some cool settings you should definitely en enable to get the most out of your device. So starting off with the log page, of course you could tap on it with the Apple Pencil. This will immediately take you to notes, but this is not what I'm gonna show you. You see, I already did six actions on the display as you witness. By squeezing the Apple Pencil, this will give you this little tool, of course. But did you know by long holding the undo, this allows you to actually toggle between the different actions you recently did. So if you want to jump ahead to like the very last undo you have, you can actually do that by simply just doing that with the Apple Pencil. The next tip is for those that actually want to preserve their battery life as long as possible is by going into your settings and going into your battery section right here. Let's scroll down to battery. In the battery health, if we scroll down, right now it's still set at 100% due to the fact that it's it's a new device now i like to have this ipad for longer than two years so i am going to go ahead and enable 80 percent limit just like an electric vehicle and other devices it's recommended if you want to maintain the longevity the battery capacity as long as possible don't charge it up to 100 percent as as the battery cells tend to wear off a little bit quicker if you just have it at 100 percent at all times and you don't use it by leaving a little small buffer, this should easily extend the battery life to last even longer on your iPad. Now, I do a lot of marketing as a side hustle, and one of the things I like to do is crop out images. But sometimes when I'm just showing a draft to my clients, and I don't have time to use Photoshop, by long holding on an image, you could actually copy the subject right here. So if we go back into our Notes app, and I hit Paste, it immediately just cropped out the image. Now this is utilizing the same technology that we have on our iPhones to allow us to create stickers, but now you can also find it on the iPad. So that's how you could quickly crop out images and just focus on the subject. Now, the Apple Pencil Pro does have Find My abilities. And if you're not familiar how to use it, of course you need to go into your Find My app. You then have to go on your devices and select the Apple Pencil and then tap on the little blue circle white icon and basically very similar to like the Find My Remote with your Apple TV. That's how it basically works. Then if you have a bunch of like folders, well right now I haven't set up my folders on my iPad Pro yet, but whenever you see like a little notification icon, by long holding on that app, it will actually show you which app has the notification. So if you have like a bunch of these little folders with a bunch of notifications on the little red circle, just long code and you can see the exact app that has that notification instead of actually tapping on it. Saving you a second or two. Now, if you do a lot of note taking with the Apple Pencil, you know, whenever you're writing something and it doesn't come out as clean as you would like it to do. So if I type in, if I write something like the iPad is big, all right, let's just, go was that part of my floppy handwriting by selecting this like this if you go all the way to the very right you'll see a new straighten option and this will actually straighten your handwriting if you want it to be perfectly straight and then of course if you do like shapes and you long hold it will actually create a proper line or straighten up that image as well a nice little trick right there unfortunately i can't say the same about improving my penmanship now, when it comes to screenshotting, one of the most useful tools is the capability to draw not just perfect circles like I demonstrated earlier, but also arrows. You see, by making a long line and then going like a quarter back and just hold it, it will immediately form an arrow. You could also make it curve as well. This is something I always catch a lot of people getting wowed and shocked whenever they see my perfect arrow screenshots when I send them stuff for like tutorial guidance and etc. Now, a less known feature about the iPad Pro is if you have the Magic Keyboard. You see, with the Magic Keyboard, if you look in Control Center, you can actually have a keyboard brightness slider, which easily gives you access to adjust the brightness of your keyboard, just like so. So if you're unfamiliar how to set this up, just go into your iPad settings, and on the right left section, I'm sorry, click on Control Center, and just add keyboard brightness. That's how you can actually adjust the brightness of the keyboard on demand without having to go into the hardware settings on your iPad. Now, since we're talking about the Magic Keyboard, here's my top favorite shortcuts. By tapping on both the globe icon on the le lower left corner of the keyboard, as well as the C key at the same time, this will immediately bring down your control center. 
And then by tapping command and space, this will immediately bring out spotlight search. As this is how I primarily navigate through my iPad with the magic keyboard, I just type up the app right here that I like to actually like quickly launch and hop between multiple different apps from here. I go in greater detail on more additional key command shortcuts over in this video over there. But that's enough of the magic keyboard for now. My next advice would be to download a calculator app. Yes, you could use the spotlight search, but I mean like, I much rather use a keyboard and out of all the apps so far this is the one I recommend let me long hold and sh show this to you guys what it this is the app right here is called calculator pad edition the reason I like this app the most is because it does have ads but it's free to download but the ads are on these little bottom sections right here so they don't bombard you when you're just trying to use the calculator it helps out the creator and it helps us out as we don't have like an ugly calculator. This looks very iOS style. So this is a great app that I would recommend for the calculator. That's free and doesn't bombard you with a lot of unnecessary ads. I'll have a link in the description down below. But it's much better than using Spotlight Search because again, I have visualization of everything else I could do. But at the end of the day, it's all general preference. Now, as for the orientation for the volume slider, this is what Apple's calling dynamic volume. So unfortunately, it does rotate with the position of the iPad for the volume slider. I looked everywhere to see if I could disable this. Unfortunately, it's not. It's stuck. Apple did this on purpose. There used to be a fixed position setting in the sound, and it's no longer here, unfortunately. So just give me a heads up. They're probably, there's no way to reverse this. Maybe someone could create a shortcut, so I'm looking into that. So stay tuned for that little video story if I find it. But aside from that, there you guys have it. Those are the new additional hidden features and some tips and tricks I wanted to cover on the latest generation iPad Pros I discovered from my previous videos. Uh, everything else, again, it's really straightforward, like the capability to split screen just by doing this. You can select the app you want to be side by side. And then, of course, you could bring this up and then launch something like so if I take like something like uh, the Note app and I drop it in the middle, it will minimize it like so. You can see my cheat sheets right here. But if I do the same thing and drag and drop like something like Safari, it could easily overlap it and I could switch between the many different mobile size apps I have over here and move it around like so, as well as the ability to close them as well. If I think it's just too much, I just want to run too. Uh, this is all out basic, straightforward. Again, I go in greater detail in this video over there. On the first things you can change on your iPad Pro once you receive it. Other than that, there you guys have it. That is the end of the video. I greatly appreciate you guys for watching. Make sure you are subscribed for possibly a part part three if I find some new integrations and some new things I just want to share with you guys so you guys can really find incredible ways to really utilize your iPad Pro to its full potential. So if you do have the Magic Keyboard, again, there's that video you could go ahead and watch right over there. Thank you so much for watching.